They're gonna get a whole lot more PlayStation games on PC. Intel has the worst quarter ever. Handhelds coming out left, right, and center, and a whole bunch of stuff that NVIDIA is probably gonna hate. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Monday, May 1st, 2023. That's right, we're in a brand new month. It's Computex month. We're gonna be going towards the later part of this month. That's when we do copy tax. And just like that was an ambiguous statement, it also turns out that Respawn and EA have an ambiguous statement about when Star Wars Jedi Survivor is going to get their patch that's gonna fix some of the VRAM issues that are plaguing this latest game. In case you're not familiar, a lot of the issues surround just not having good frame rate. The game is stable, but doesn't really run very quickly, has a lot of frame stuttering, and in fact, Digital Foundry calls it the worst AAA port of 2023. Part of this is just because it's unoptimized, can use up to 21 gigabytes of VRAM at some point. And EA says that they acknowledge this and that part of it is because you're running it with lower performing processors, which a lot of people have pointed out. I'm using a 4090 with a 5800X3D. What, ML, uh, you want me to go to the 7800X3D? That's a requirement now? What's going on? And it turns out, especially if you watch Digital Foundry's video, what you'll find is the fact that even if you change the game settings, the frame rate doesn't really change a whole lot. It appears like it does next to nothing to adjust the settings and that it's just a buggy, unoptimized port from the get-go. The game is playable, and I've seen a lot of reports, even on Friday's episode of Hot News, plenty of people were chiming in being like, my frame rate's totally fine. I'm running at like 100 plus. I don't know what everybody else is talking about. It turns out that it's not applicable to every system everywhere, but bad PC ports in the name of the game, and Sony wants to give us way more of them because they're making money hand over fist. Turns out they didn't realize that they had a huge untapped market when it came to PC ports and now with their latest earnings reports that have come out their PC numbers are sky high so they were roughly flat in 2021 in terms of how much money they were making in PC game ports but then they have almost doubled that amount of sales in 2022 and it's not hard to see why they made nearly a billion dollars in Q4 of 2022 from these sales Marvel Spider-Man remastered Sackboy Big Adventure Miles Morales Returnal The Last of Us Part 1 all came to PC within the last year, at least within the last financial year of Sony, making it so that they're earning a ton of money, likely that they're going to continue to incentivize this. So if you keep buying the games, they'll keep giving you buggy messes at launch. Not all of these games have been bad. Returnal wasn't horrible on launch. The Spider-Man games also weren't bad. They weren't great either. God of War was probably one of the better ones. Last of Us Part 1 also having some issues, which Digital Foundry said that Jedi Survivor is worse than The Last of Us Part 1, so you should probably, too. Yeah, that's some scathing damnification there. Mm -hmm. While Sony's making money hand over fee, Intel is not. They had their worst quarter ever in terms of financial loss down 36% year on year. They lost $2.8 billion in terms of profit. They have none. It's gone. The revenue was $11.7 billion, which was higher than they were forecasting. It was supposed to be around 10.5 to 11.5, so they beat out their own expectations, but they knew that they were gonna have this massive loss, $2.8 billion. A lot of this is just because PC sales are down industry-wide. It's not just Intel's fault. However, there are a lot of Intel-specific problems, like the fact that they are ceding so much ground to AMD when it comes to the actual server and data center environment, and they have a whole lot of problems with actually delivering on the nodes that they've been talking about. But all of the executives at Intel have made it seem like they are very firm and very confident in themselves moving forward. There's been huge shakeups in the leadership position at Intel in the last few years that does have me a little bit more confident in them. And in fact, the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, indicating that they are still on track for Meteor Lake, which is supposed to launch later this year. That's supposed to be mid-tier, like Core i5 and below. They're also on track to launch Arrow Lake sometime next year. And all of the notes that they're coming with, 20A, 18A, all of the things that kind of left them behind not being able to get on 10 nanometers, it looks like they're no longer struggling with that, at least according to the communication that they're bringing out. It does seem like they've righted the ship, at least to some extent. I'm excited to see where Intel goes. They're not expecting to earn too much more money this year, but hopefully in 2024, 2025, they might have some sort of resurgence, especially once Arrow Lake hits sometime later next year. But while Intel's given us all of the fresh updates, Windows is giving you none, especially if you're on Windows 10. 22H2 is the last update coming to Windows 10. Microsoft just releasing a blog post reiterating this, that they're, they're done. They're done supporting it. October 2025, Windows 10 loses support. It's going to get deprecated. And that this was the last update that was ever going to roll out to your favorite.
favorite operating system. And I know that your favorite part of hot news is UFD deals. So let's kick it on over to Reese. Hopefully he's better this week. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm Reese and I finally have a voice again. So let's go. Because first up, we have the Dell G2723 h their 27 inch 1080p 280 hertz monitor which is currently going for only 199 dollars 99 cents which is a hundred dollars off and then a great pairing for that would be this msi mech radeon rx 6700 xt this 12 gig graphics card is currently going for only 339 dollars 99 cents with the included promo code and don't forget it also comes with the last of us which you should definitely play if you haven't already when they fix it i'm still mad about that and that's it those are the deals you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brad for the rest of your hot news cheers thanks reese but a great deal that i know you're not gonna have is this aok -OK zoe or alk zoe i really need to figure out how to pronounce this especially since allegedly they're sending us one to do a review on but the a1 pro is getting announced launched and has a price point that we can expect and this is one of the first launches of handhelds that are going to have the new 7840u chip which is kind of similar to the amd z1 extreme that's been the talk of the town lately and the pricing uh, especially compared to the rog ally leaked pricing is not great so this pre-order pricing is 799 you get 32 gigs of ram and a 512 gig storage which makes it slightly better than the rog ally which is supposed to come in at 699 but you're paying 100 dollars more in order to get that ram but if you consider the fact that this is pre-order pricing and it's going to cost a thousand dollars regularly this is one of the reasons why i've been expecting the rog ally to cost more than all of the rumors have been indicating that this these are the specs that we're expecting and it's going to cost close to a thousand dollars to get all that's been promised i'm curious to see how this aok zoe a1 pro performs at least when it's in my hands but it's roughly the same spec as the high class rog ally it's got the rdna 312 compute unit at the same speed the eight core 16 thread the only thing that's really substantially different is that the a1 pro is going to have 32 gigs of ram of lp ddr6 at 6400 instead of the 16 gigs of ram that the rg ally has but it's going to have a 350 nit display as opposed to the 500 nit on the rg ally it's going to be eight inches compared to seven inches it's going to be heavier at 729 grams which is more than even the steam deck so it's it's a weird device i'm i hoping i'm gonna like it and also no not quite clear if it supports external gpus hopefully it has some sort of usb4 implementation that allows for an external gpu i think the big thing is here that they're launching it a few weeks ahead of when the rg ally comes out i'm excited to see what this competition landscape shaping up to be in the ioneo 2s also getting announced which is going to have roughly the same specs one of the big things is that's going to have a brand new cooler which is supposed to allow it to get more performance out of it it's going to have a 50 watt hour battery which is going to be better than the rg ally they've also announced that you can update the motherboard into the ioneo 2 in case you bought that one it's just not quite clear how much that's going to cost so if you want the 7840u over the 6800u which reese has been using and we were supposed to get a review out a few weeks ago but he's been getting sick and been busy and i i've been gracious but we really need to get a review out of the ioneo 2 before the rg ally and everything else drops because uh it's kind of late at this point but the ioneo 2 has been a great asset for reese the external gpu support has allowed him to actually play games that he couldn't otherwise play before but it does look like the rg ally has more leaked pricing because in friday's episode we talked about the fact that the high-end version with the z1 extreme chip with this 512 gigs of storage is supposed to cost 699 now we have leaked pricing from the same leaker that the z1 version with 256 gigs of storage is supposed to cost 599 which is a hundred dollars cheaper which actually is really confusing for me and makes me feel like they're not going to sell a whole lot lot of these essentially this is the same device in terms of the physical aspect of it same screen same display same cooling same ergonomics all of that the difference is that it has half of the storage at 256 gigs but then it also has two fewer cores coming in at six cores instead of eight but then it has a third of the graphics performance coming in at four compute units of RDNA 3, which not 100% sure how that's actually going to stack up against the Steam Deck, especially once you add in the fact that this is running Windows 11 and not the optimized Linux. Coming in at 599 for this is a much rougher sell, at least in my opinion. It's $70 more than the equivalently storage Steam Deck, but I just don't see this being worth it, especially for $100 more. You get the Z1 Extreme, which has more cores and 
and three times the amount of graphics performance, at least based on the amount of compute units. I just, can somebody in the comments justify why you would buy this one? Why would you get this one besides the argument of it's $100 cheaper? Like the, where where is the value in the Z1 being so cut down versus the Z1 Extreme? Let me know down below in the comments. And we're gonna let you know some stuff that's gonna tick off Nvidia. Number one, the RTX 4060 Ti, which is supposed to get announced sometime this month, has been pictured, leaks on leaks. This leaker who's showing off the, at least the GPU die of the RTX 4060 Ti is also the same individual who leaked the box art that we see about it. But this is only gonna have eight gigabytes of VRAM. It's also gonna have slower memory bandwidth. It's also gonna have a lower PCI Express interface. It's just a bad card. I just, this has to cost like 300 bucks to justify how cut down it is versus the 3060 even in so many ways. Maybe it'll be gaming faster in specific instances. Like, yeah, it has 22 teraflops, which is gonna be good, but it's, it's cut down in a lot of ways that it doesn't need to be. And I guess Nvidia just decided that that's what they're gonna do. But AMD is gonna continue to hype on the marketing train that, hey, this stuff that Nvidia is doing, actually bad for you. Come over to Team Red where we do the good stuff for you. You want 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which you're going to need to run all of these unoptimized PlayStation ports that are coming over to PC. We're going to give it to you for at least $499. That's where we start at with the RX 6800. We're going to give you 16 gigabytes of VRAM for $500. Bucks. You know what NVIDIA gives you for $500? RTX 3070 piece of crap, which only has 8 gigabytes. They don't even give you 16 gigabytes until you get to $1,200 Renos. You're going to need all of that VRAM VRAM, eat the VRAM, delicious, delicious VRAM, use the VRAM. It appears that Nvidia has a different mentality this generation. Previously, they gave you less VRAM at a faster speed. AMD gave you more VRAM at a slower speed. And now Nvidia is like, you know what? You don't need either. You don't need speed, nor do you need the more. We're just going to give you less and you're going to deal with it because you got DLSS 3 and you're going to enjoy it. But what you could also enjoy is potentially some lower power on your RTX graphics card because there's a third party tool that's been announced, which I want to caveat anytime third-party tools are announced. They could be viruses. This has happened multiple times where we discuss something that people put out on the internet, the tech community gets excited by it, and turns out it's a Trojan. You probably shouldn't have trusted it to begin with. So I'm going to caveat that right up front. And that might be one of the reasons NVIDIA's mad at this, because they're using NVIDIA's name to just push some malware. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying always be careful when you download anything that's not from an official party. And even with all the hacks that have been happening lately, be careful when downloading things from an official party because things could go wild. Anyways, a per app GPU management GUI has been developed for Nvidia's GPU power management command line features, also known as the system management interface. This is getting a lot of people to talk about it. Specifically, it just allows you to have automatic power limits per game that you're playing or per application. It has a lot more fine tuned control of your gaming in order to make sure that you're graphics cards not trying to push things to the limits. Potentially, you're getting more bang for buck out of the lower power limits. It just makes it a lot easier to control. If you look over on video cards, they say that the tool appears to be safe. If you look over on Tom's hardware, they talk about the fact that people are flagging it as a Trojan or that it's potentially malicious. So in case you want to mess around with the power limits that you got on your NVIDIA GPU, the command line, the SMI is still going to be the safest way. There is this GUI again. Some people say it's a virus. Some people say it isn't. They're using NVIDIA's official name, calling it NVIDIA GPU Power Management, but it's not made by NVIDIA at all. And NVIDIA didn't make this episode of Hot News. Me did it with my team. We'll see you here tomorrow for more.